And if I wanted to do this with Derby, it's pretty much the same process. So I would create the JDBC provider Now I would want to create the XML data source with the JNDI name as the application expects. Select the JDBC provider. Just give it a test database name. Go ahead and save. Additionally, with Derby in a local version, it's pretty easy to go ahead and add the uh, create equals true. So what this will do is if the database doesn't exist, it'll go ahead and create it. So again, like with DB2, at this point, it's best to go ahead and test the connection. Okay, so it tested correctly. So at this point, we're going to have to go ahead and stop the application server because Derby running in a local mode can only be accessed by one process at a time, and we need to add the, the table to Derby. So connecting to Derby would be just going into the Derby directory. And running ij.bat and then connecting to the JDBC uh, URL for the test uh, database that we just forced to be created. And now we want to create the table. And once the table is created, Start your application server again, load up the sample. And you can see when you view the database, it's actually telling me that the database isn't available. The reason for this is that Derby, unlike DB2, doesn't support the SQL XML types in its JDBC driver. So we can talk to Derby, but we need to tell Derby that it doesn't support the SQL XML. What this will do is it'll tell the application to send different uh, SQL uh, queries down to the database in the case of Derby um, that won't be able to send uh, sort of pure XML end to end like DB2 and the XML feature pack can do, uh, but it'll actually send it through uh, sort of a big binary blob down to uh, the database. So once you change that, now when you view the database, the database shows as empty. And again, you can use the application. So I can do the search comments. And I can notice that it's storing them into the database when, it, uh, when I click Add Email to Database. and it's storing away that persistence data. In either case, whether it's using Derby or DB2, it is going to mix the data that's coming from the blog feed um, and the data that's in the XML database. Um, but as you could see with DB2, it just works a lot better uh, in the fact that uh, DB2 supports all of the uh, pure XML connectivity all the way down. So hopefully this demonstration has shown you how to set up the database configuration to make this sample work. You can read this developer works article. I'll give you the link of how uh, we coded this application and why we coded it the way and uh, the way we did and best practices uh, for talking to an XML database. And in the future, we're going to have uh, uh, other articles that will talk about 
um, other ways to continue to optimize this sort of uh, mixing of transient uh, data in the middle tier with persistent data in uh, XML database.